In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that purifying us by the sacred practice of penance, you may lead us in sincerity of heart to attain the holy things to come through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Reading from the book of Genesis. Israel loved Joseph, best of all his sons, for he was the child of his old age, and he has made him a long tunic. When his brothers saw that their father loved him best of all his sons, they hated him so much that they would not even greet him. One day, when his brothers had gone to the pasture of their father's flock at Chechem, Israel said to Joseph, Your brothers, you know, are tending our flocks at, she at Shechem. Get ready, I will send you to them. So Joseph went after his brothers and caught up with them in Dothan. They noticed him from a distance, and before he came up to them, they plotted to, ki to kill him. Then they said to one another, Here comes that master dreamer. Come on. Let us kill him and throw him into one of the cisterns here. We could say that a wild beast devoured him. We shall then see what comes of his dreams. When Reuben heard this, he tried to save him from their hands, saying, We must not take his life. Instead of shedding blood, he continued, Just throw him into that cistern there in the desert, but do not kill him outright. His purpose was to rescue him from their hands, and return him to his father. So when Joseph came up to them, they stripped him from the long tunic he had on. Then they took him and threw him into the cistern, which was empty and dry. They then sat down to their meal. Looking up, they saw a caravan of Ish Ishmaelites coming from Gilead, their camels laden with gum, balm, and resin, to be taken down to Egypt. Judah said to his brothers, What is to be gained by killing our brother and concealing his blood? Rather, let us sell him to, to, to these Ishmaelites instead of doing away with him ourselves. After all, he is our brother, our own flesh. His brothers agreed. They sold Joseph to the Ishmaelites for 20 pieces of silver. The word of the Lord. Remember the marvels the Lord has done. Remember, Remember the marvels the Lord has done. When the Lord called down a famine on the land and ruined the crop that sustained them, he sent a man before them, Joseph sold as a slave. Remember the marvels the Lord has done. They had weighed him down with fetters, and he was bound with chains, till his prediction came to pass, and the word of the Lord proved him true. Remember the marvels the Lord has done. The king sent and released him. The ruler of the people set him free. He made him lord of his house and ruler of all his possessions. Remember the marvels the Lord has done. <clears throat> Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. King of endless glory, praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. God 
so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, so that everyone who believes in him might have eternal life. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to the chief priests and the elders of the people, Here, another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a hedge around it, dug a winepress in it, and built a tower. Then he leased it to the tenants and went on a journey. When vintage time drew near, he sent his servants to the tenants to obtain his produce. But the tenants seized the servants and the one they beat, Another they killed, and a third they stoned. Again he sent other servants, more numerous than the first ones, but they treated them in the same way. Finally, he sent his son to them, thinking, they will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to one another, this is the heir. Come, let us kill him and acquire his inheritance. They seized him, threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. What will, what will the owner of the vineyard do to those tenants when he comes? They answered him, He will put those wretched men to a wretched death, and lease his vineyard to other tenants, who will give him the produce at the proper times. Jesus said to them, Did you never read in the scriptures? The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done, and it, and it is wonderful in our eyes. Therefore I say to you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that will produce its fruit. When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard his parables, they knew that he, they knew that he was speaking about them. And although they were attempting to arrest him, they feared, feared the crowds for they regarded him as a prophet. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise In our Gospel today, we hear the parable of, well, one of the par parables of the vineyard about how the tenants would kill the master's, the master's servant and eventually kill his son, which he knows representing Jesus Christ. But at the end of the gospel, after Jesus explains the whole parable, he says, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that will produce its fruit. Jesus has given us the kingdom of God through his death on the cross and his resurrection from the dead. And so we have the kingdom of God that Christ has given us in a very special way through that resurrection. And so, but here Christ says, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that will produce its fruit. <clears throat> so we are called, because now that we have received the kingdom of God, to produce its fruit. And this, <clears throat> and this type of fruit that Jesus is speaking of, of course, is many different things, but all about the good deeds and good works of God. So today, let us reflect on what this fruit might be for us what our job as tenants in this this holy vineyard might be what kind of fruits that we ourselves as individuals and as a whole as christians are called to produce we're called to produce the fruit many different fruits but all of it the only way we can produce these fruits is by living as jesus as the as shown by the example of jesus we're called to be kind we're called to be loving we're called to repent of our sins. We're called to be there for others, to help others, to do good deeds for God, to worship our Lord. We're called to pray, to fast, to almsgive, and to do all of these things. So that's what we reflect on today. We reflect on how we've been given this kingdom by Jesus himself. And we reflect on 
how it is our job now to produce these fruits. And so we ask ourselves and we ask God, what are the fruits and how does he want us to produce these fruits for the kingdom of God? Please remain seated. Oh, please remain seated. Um, today's Mass is being offered for the special intention of the Rojas family and also for the special intentions of the Elwell family. And today's Mass is also being offered for the repose of the soul of Ed Stanley. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, but become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, they'll become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. <clears throat> may your merciful grace prepare your servants, O God, for the worthy celebration of these mysteries and lead them to it by a devout way of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you will that our self-denial should give you thanks, humble our sinful pride, contribute to the feeding of the poor, and so help us imitate you in your kindness. And so we glorify you with the countless angels, as with one voice of praise, we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, 
He gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, proclaim your death, the Lord, until you come. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, who may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, we may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation. So, deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. So, so distantly, let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
for those joining us through the live stream of the Mass, we will now be making an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Just a reminder for those um, here present uh, physically at the Mass, that communion will be distributed at the, the end of Mass. Um, so I ask that you all please be seated. Let us pray. Having received this pledge of eternal salvation, we pray, O Lord, that we may set our course so well as to attain the redemption you promise through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Bow down for the blessing. Grant your people, O Lord, we pray, health of mind and body, that by constancy of in good deeds, they may always merit the defense of your protection through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Amen. Just uh, a few of the regular communion announcements as we begin, uh, as we enter into the time for communion. Uh, since it will just be my